All right, guys, well, welcome to Marketing Mechanics. What I want to focus our talk on today is two things. So I want to talk about ways that we can leverage a database, ways that we can leverage social media to go after new cash out refinance leads and, and opportunities that can come through that channel. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook and Instagram and what you guys need to know in terms of how to advertise, what are the advertising options. Um, so whether that's lead generation, that's marketing to your database. Um, there's a lot of really cool things that can be done inside that environment to generate new business. And we really want to emphasize, uh, you know, how you guys put yourself in front of more people to generate more conversations. Um, so let's dive into it. Let's have a conversation as it relates to, you know, refinance, what you, from a cash out refinance standpoint, uh, you know, what are some of the ways that you can identify some cash out refinance leads? So first off, let's start why are, you know, cash out refinance is attractive around the holidays. You know, so think about it. A lot of consumers are dealing with high interest credit card debt. Uh, you know, homeowners are, you know, they you know, they're looking at times, you know, after the holidays to want to redo a kitchen to uh, you know, buy buy some presents as it, you know, comes holiday time. And, you know, one of the things that we really want to emphasize is that homeowners need cash and a lot of them are sitting on the equity in their home. So, the pen, the point that we're trying to paint here is you know, cash out refinances, whether it's for homeowners who need cash, credit card debt spikes, you know, um, being able to, you know, a lot of people, what they're not looking at, you know, someone who's sitting in a 3% interest rate is they're looking solely at, you know, what is the mortgage rate or their interest rate they're paying on their mortgage. They're not looking holistically at the credit card debt they have, the other, you know, short-term loans that, that are in place. So cash out refinances can be an attractive option for, uh, you know, for homeowners in this, this current environment. And the way that I would recommend starting with this, so let's look at our database. You know, over the last three to five years, taking a look at clients who have bought homes, who have refinanced, you know, homes. So using your past client database and inside of uh, uh, EMC CRM, we have a new cash out refinance campaign that we can upload these contacts to. But starting with you got to segment the people you want to go after. Uh, so taking a look at your database and don't be so caught up specifically on where their interest rate is. Look at the time at when the loan is closed. So look over the last three to five years, the transactions that you have you have put together. And then what you could do is you want to segment them into uh, you know, how much uh, uh, their LTV, so their loan to value rate, how much equity are these people currently sitting on? And our objective here when we're reaching out to these individuals is we want to perform an analysis. We want to, you know, we're heading into the holiday season. A lot of people, you know, are dealing with this high interest debt. So our refinance campaign that's inside the CRM really touches on now is the time to do a mortgage analysis. We're heading into the end of 2024, you know, uh, and, and as you're preparing for 2025, we want to make sure that you're in the best possible position for your mortgage. So segmenting that database, being able to segment the audience and consumers uh, in the message that you're trying to speak to them. So that's the first, you know, the first objective. The second is people don't know what they don't know. So leveraging a video on social media. And really what I would recommend with this video is, you know, gratitude, be grateful. As you're heading into the holiday season, you want to take a moment to thank your family, thank your friends, thank your sphere of influence. Your business would not be where it's at today without the support of these individuals. And, and what you're closing with, your call to action is, you know, as the market has changed, you know, we know that a lot of homeowners are sitting on a, a, a equity in their home. Now is a great time to do a mortgage analysis and make sure that your goals and where you're looking to head into the future from a real estate wealth perspective, you are prepared for, uh, you know, for the changes. And using your database, using social media, you need to create that, that conversation, that awareness around the opportunities and why a cash out refinance can benefit these, you know, these consumers. Joe, what's going on, man? Just saw you join. All right. Uh, so when we're talking about crafting the right message, you know, and and I talked a little bit about, you know, the holiday theme, you know, refinance around financial relief for the holidays, you know, the ability to free up cash for gifts, trips, family gatherings, you know, what is the emotional need of these consumers, you know, being a good parent, being a good family member, you know, the pain points that these audiences are dealing with are part of what we really want to touch on. Uh, 
you know, so with our strategy and how you're leveraging social media is we want to create some content. We want to create some information that speaks to the pain points we know people are dealing with, but also providing a solution. The solution is people are sitting on a ton of debt in our, in, you know, in their homes. Uh, so, you know, the strategy here is taking advantage of the cash out refinance campaign, segmenting your database into transactions you've closed over the last three to five years. And then on social media, we're creating some content. We're creating some videos, uh, you know, and, and the thing that we talked about last week, you know, from a branding and video standpoint is every single one of you guys have has an amazing camera and it's sitting on your desk right in front of you. So the ability to take action, create a, a video that talks about gratitude and why now, um, you know, is, is the perfect time to do a mortgage review. You know, this sort of action and, and taking this sort of action is going to generate conversations with your sphere, with your database, uh, you know, and, and ultimately what we're looking to do is to generate more, more opportunities. Uh, so, you know, action steps here, database, run an export, you know, whether it's in Byte, lending pad, uh, Arrive, all the loans you have active inside that environment. Let's get them organized. Let's get them segmented. Let's get them into the CRM. And our our uh, uh, and our cash out refinance campaign. Uh, you know, the second is the video. Create a video. Speak speak to the pain points that these consumers are dealing with, and why you want to take action on um, you know a mortgage analysis. Remember, you're not trying to sell through social. You're trying to educate and create you know create conversations, create awareness around why now is the time to you know to take action. Uh, next thing I would tell you is. Uh, with our uh, EMC social media content calendar, we have some specific posts coming out in November that talk about the benefits of a refinance and why a cash out refinance would make sense. Um, so make sure that if you haven't signed up for that already, you're active on that. We have a real and a static graphic that's going to be going out in November. So that's going to be a great chance for you to get some free content that's going out to your sphere uh, you know, as it relates to the benefits of a, of a cash out. Lawrence, okay. you got a question? Yes, sir. And so uh, with the new platforms that we add, do y'all automatically have that? Or do we need to, I, I guess we need to send you the sign-ins for those. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just shoot me over an email. I can get you connected here. Okay. Because I yeah, you got me going already on the on the other stuff, the Instagram, Facebook, but I added some more since then. Are you doing anything on TikTok? N no, that's one of the, that's one of the ones I'm... <laughs> just got established that nothing is going on TikTok for whatever reason. That's the but next tool that we're going to start incorporating into the, the social media, the EMC social media content calendar. Um, oh. There's some integrations that are coming there that are going to allow us to be able to share the content there as well. So just an FYI in terms of what's coming. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Doing, how about Pancrest and, oh God, there's a couple of other ones, but I just need to send you all those those sign ins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just shoot me over an email and we can hop on a call to discuss. Okay. Okay. It'll, it'll only take a couple of minutes. The key is the two step verification. We'll have to uh, get a code from you when we're doing it. Okay. I got you. Thank you. Perfect. Um, just calling a couple of people as we're kind of going through this. So, um, Rodney, do you, you know, uh, from a database standpoint, you know, do you have your database organized? Are you inside the CRM? Where's your database living now? I really don't have much uh, <laughs> as far as the database. Um, a lot of my clients is pretty much on my cell phone. I reach out to them, stay in touch. They call me when they're ready and they call me when they send over referrals. But I'm trying to get more, um, more on the AI side of it. How do you, do you have an iPhone or what type of phone do you have? Uh, Android. All right, I'm going to share a link with you to the CSV file. So there is an article here. I'm going to I'm going to drop this in the chat box that will give okay. you some directions. And what this is specifically going to do is it's uh, it's going to enable you to export. Uh, here, I got to copy a couple things. But what it's going to enable you to do is to export your contacts 
from an Android into a CSV file so that we can get them into the CRM. So, you know, any email addresses, phone numbers, first name, last name of contacts you have inside the environment uh, or inside of your phone, we can export and put into the CRM. Oh, okay, perfect. Give me a sec here. Does anyone, uh, let's just call on a couple you know, of others as we go through this. Uh, Kenny, what about you? Where's your database live? Yeah, so I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm, uh, I've got mostly all over, you know, emails, uh, phone, um, got business cards from folks that I've met, paper records. Um, you know, I'm new to the business this year after a long hiatus. So my original database of all the loans that I did in my first go around as a mortgage lender uh, exists probably in a landfill on a hard drive and an old laptop and form of Calix point files. Um, so I'm kind of rebuilding. Okay. So what I would tell you, same concept is, uh, you know, with your, you know, do you, do you have an Android or an iPhone? Yeah. Android as well. So that video that I just dropped in the chat box will give you directions on how you can export your contacts out of that. You know, people who are in your phone, those are your family, your friends, your sphere of influence. Um, in your particular situation, I would do an announcement around, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a mortgage professional. I've gotten back in the, you know, the industry and I'm serving people, you know, and, and create some awareness to that audience on what you're doing. Um, you know, and that's, it's going to help you get your message in front of, you know, in front of more people. You're, you know, the people that are in your phone, you know, those are people that know you, like you, trust you for the most part. Uh, you know, so uh, being able to export that database, get it into the CRM, use it for some text, some emails, um, you'll create some conversations and that's what you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what about Victoria? What are you doing from a database standpoint? Where Where's your database at? Right now, everything is in the go high level. Um, and we are, after last week's meeting, uh, going to sign up with uh, Bonzo for, to start for next month and kind of get everything going in there because our text campaigns and email campaigns haven't yielded much through go high level at this point. Yep. And we weren't aware that it had shifted back to Bonzo <laughs> um, so in the summer. When, when we had gotten going, it was directing everyone to go high level. Yeah, we're, I mean, we still have a, you know, a lot of users on high level. Was it, are you doing uh, like trigger leads? Um, Brian has been doing the trigger leads since last week. He's been kind of taking them and right now he's just calling them independently. Um, like I said, our, our go high level, we had, you know, our, our number had gotten banned at one point. So then we had to shift everything to the new one. And we just, it doesn't seem like it's picked up traction. So we're going to, you know, try that new. And then basically I'm still working on getting all the social media pages set up. We just transferred over all his LinkedIn. We're trying to get our Google business um, review page all set up, transferred from his old company he worked for so that we have all the reviews there um, in one place and then can direct people there going forward and everything. Yeah, that's perfect. Then we can get you on the content calendar. The thing I would tell you, um, you know, whether it's high level or Bonzo, where we typically see people run into issues with, um, you know, with deliverability as it relates to text messages on trigger leads. So um, I know, you know, like thinking about some of the groups, Survivor Mortgage, like creating different sub accounts that phone that have A2P verified and, and separate sub accounts uh, can kind of help you know, with, with issues of deliverability. So, you know, something. Yeah. We, we came over just working our old lead database, which was the initial uh, plan. So a lot of them are really old. Um, and now we're really siphoning off the book of business that he has of people he's worked with and done loans for already. And I know that that can also be imported um, when, when we get to Bonzo with everything associated with his license so that we can specifically, you know, correspond with those people um and he's done property radar a little bit kind of done some specific targeting for that as well um so we're the hands and everything at this point 
Yeah, that's good. You know, I think the best CRM is the one that's being used. So, you know, as long as we've got it out, we've got content that's hitting your database, you know, especially the loans that Brian's closed previously, you know, getting more information in front of that audience is, uh, you know, going to yield more, more conversations. Right. Uh, Defresh. I love the name when you come into our Zoom, Zoom meetings. Uh, how are, wh where are you keeping your database organized now? Um, I use a CRM called Buffini Referral Maker, and I've had it for about five years. Awesome. And and is that where like you have like month monthly touch points that are going out of there? Like, what sort of content are you hitting with your database? Um, I, I do a newsletter once a month via email. Um, referral Maker is very rudimentary, you know, um, so I use it and I understand how to use it. Whereas Bonzo I've had for a couple months and it's just sitting dormant. I just can't, I can't get it. I just can't wrap my head around it yet. So, but I, I categorize all my people. Um, I've got, I have different like uh, descriptive categories, you know, whether it's like an agent or they're mm -hmm. qualified with a 1003 or they just had an inquiry. And then I also have a, a grading system. Um, so I kind of cross those. I like that. Yeah, n n nothing is automated. I can't text from it. I can't. Um, I, I can set up reminders. The calendar is not robust, but it. I, I have it all in one place. To me, it's it's the most valuable thing I own. You know, is that CRM? Yeah, for sure. Having your database organized in an environment. The thing I would tell you, whether it's Bonzo or it's through High Level, uh, there's. You know, we've we've got a closed loan campaign, we've got a pre-approval out shopping campaign, we've got a realtor val like campaigns that are kind of set it and forget it for your business that we could add all of your database to. So at the very you know bare minimum, they're getting hit with some value added emails and texts. Uh, so you know, it might make sense for us to hop on a, a call because I can help you get those contacts, even if it's going to be Bonzo or High Level, whichever platform we're using. Just being able to get that database into an environment would be useful. Yeah, I'm down for that. Cool. All right. Uh, calling a couple others while we've got Eric. Where, what about you? How are you marketing your database currently? Eric, you there? I think you're muted. All right, we'll keep moving. What about Sloan? You there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your data. How are you marketing your, you know, where's your database living? How are you marketing them? What does, you know, what does that look like for you? So uh, right now it's living in a site called MLO Flow. Yep. Uh, from a previous company. Um, honestly, with all the mortgage freebies, like, you know, I'm talking to joe yesterday even we're getting a, I'm, I'm my goal is to get it transferred over here before even the first of the month uh, perfect what would be incredibly helpful with the process of getting you into the you know high level crm is realtors have a your your audience of realtors segmented into one campaign i mean mm -hmm. into one list your uh, uh close loan past clients into a second list and any pre-approvals out shopping you know like apps that are in there's three campaigns that we could turn on like during onboarding that can have content going out to that list and, and you know, really on the uh, closed loan and the realtor content, that's going to keep, you know, six to 12 well, months of, of stuff firing at them. No, and I'm a, I'm a firm believer and you got to have a million irons in the fire, right? Mm -hmm. And all this is an electronic billboard. The other thing I've been working on is actually with the, some of the leads coming in let's say like the teal leads from UWM mm -hmm. and going directly into a text campaign. Uh, the text level engagement is such a higher engagement these days. And I've been focused around that over the last several years. Um, there's just a lot of opportunity right now. I don't think we understand how much data we have at our, our fingertips and how great AI kind of segments this stuff. And then, you know, the information that's available, emails and phone numbers. Yeah. You know, 
One thing that I found to be effective, like say you're doing a, you know, like a market update, you know, video email, you know, when you're using a text to nudge people to that email where there's more substance in it, that way, you know, the text is, is, is you know, it's like a mini tweet. You're like, Hey, just, you know, it's, it's Zach Cusack just sent you over a, you know, a, a quick video on the market. Thought it'd be useful to check it out. Uh, you know, nudge people back to those emails. That way you're seeing a higher open rate, higher engagement rate, pull through rates on your videos, that sort of stuff. Thinking about the ways you can leverage text, uh, you know, the guy yeah. into the value that you're, you're trying to deliver is important there too. When you talk to the funnel guys at UWM, like Samid over there, there is a variance, a variable on text from 10 to 17% with most shops. Mm -hmm. And that 7% difference is words matter. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like how you craft it. That's why I'm excited to get Bonzo up and running. Yep. Uh, you know, just some of the stuff you can do within that platform are, it's amazing. And, and for absolutely for the cost, we get it here. It's, it's unbelievable. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, database, uh, management is a contact sport. The more you contact, <laughs> the, you know, the more opportunities you're going to get out of it. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Thanks for sharing. Uh, all right. So let's talk a little bit, you know, the back half of, of today's discussion, just Facebook ads. What do you need to know as it relates to Facebook ads? The why, you know, why you, you should be leveraging them, how you should be leveraging them. What are the different types of campaigns that could be created through, uh, you know, through a Facebook ad funnel? Um, and let's just start with the different types of campaign objectives. So awareness, you know, an awareness add on socials is think of it like a 21st century digital shopping cart where you're following people around. So a certain segment, whether it's an interest targeting or you have a lookalike audience, like a lookalike audience would be your database, the, you know, what we were just discussing here. So your awareness ad is designed to keep you in front of the, you know, in front of the right people. So think of, uh, you know, a list of realtors. You're trying to stay in front of your strategic partners so that, you know, you're giving them information as it relates to the market. You're giving them information on how to have better conversations with, you know, with buyers. Um, so the awareness uh, uh, objective is, is to be seen, to be in front of people. Traffic objective is this is what you're going to use if you're using one of the funnels we have inside of high level or the funnels available inside of Bonzo. But this is going to take people out of Facebook, out of Instagram to your landing page. Um, what we know about traffic ads and traffic objectives is you're taking someone out of their comfort zone. So they're on Facebook, they're scrolling around, seeing what their friends are up to. We're removing them from that environment and, and sending them to a landing page. A um, couple of things you want to consider here. So they're outside their comfort zone. They're, they're, they're at a location where they're looking for more information. So we want to make sure that you know, the information we are giving to them is digestible. So an example and what I mean by that, let me, let me bring something up. Let's go here. So the this traffic would be is more of a conversion. Yeah. yeah. Well, traffic, uh, traffic is more like you're you're taking someone from Facebook, taking that traffic from Facebook and sending them to like this and an example landing page. Uh, you know, and the concept here is, you know, it's about taking action. So start your pre-approval. The form pops up. You know, they're going step by step and filling out the information. Uh, this is an example of this funnel, the purchase. We've got a purchase, refinance, self-employed, a VA. Uh, these funnels are available inside of the EMC uh, CRM inside high level. But, you know, the objective behind traffic is you're taking someone to a destination where they can give up information or learn more about your offer and what's, you know, what's being, uh, you know, presented there. And I freeze and see. Okay. An engagement ad is going to be, uh, cut now. okay. 
An engagement ad is designed to drive conversations around content that you've shared on social. So maybe you're doing you know, a market in a minute video or you're doing a gratitude video where you're trying to generate more views. You're trying to generate more conversations on the post and keeping someone inside your, your uh, you know, inside of, of social. The thing that I like about engagement posts is the more that you have people engaging with your content, the more likely they are going to be to see your, uh, the more likely they're going to be able to see some of the organic stuff. The other thing is Facebook and Instagram. These are engagement platforms. These are social platforms. So when Facebook sees that you're getting some conversations, some likes, some comments and engagement, and you have an engagement ad that's running, that's going to push it down that engage, push that ad spend down the engagement trail. And that means you can get access you know, to your friends, followers, your friends sphere of influence. So you're trying to tap into people's uh, spheres of influence that are already connected with you on social and engagement ad can give you that sort of ability to, to do that. Uh, and the last objective I'll talk about for you know the purpose of, of you know generating mortgage leads is uh, a lead generation objective. So a couple of things you want to consider here. So a lead form objective is keeping people inside of social when they're create uh, when they're giving up their information. So it's very easy for someone to give up, you know, name, email, mobile, you know, mobile phone number, um, to ask some, you know, or, or to complete some questions as it relates to, uh, you know, credit score, timeline, are they working with an agent? Uh, you know, these sorts of, you know, these sorts of actions and, and uh, you know, on social, what we historically see with lead form objectives is they're, you know, they're a little bit further down the funnel. When you're sending someone to a destination where they're giving up information, their intent, their intent is typically a little, uh, you know, further along. So lead forms is a great way if you're trying to build a list, you're trying, you've got like an offer, like a downloadable guidebook, something where you're, you're, you know, you're delivering value and trying to start that conversation, you know, five mistakes to avoid when buying a home where <laughs> you're running an ad that is, um, you know, you're running an ad that speaks to, um, you know, a guidebook, like you're giving something of value to your, you know, to your audience. So using, a lead form objective can gather the information you need. You could send that lead to your CRM where automation is then hitting these individuals, um, you know, with the, the, the hook or the value add, you know, the, 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 the offer that was being presented there. So uh, next thing I'll show you is let's go through here's let's talk a little bit from a targeting standpoint. So <clears throat> couple of things whenever you're creating a Facebook ad, you're running ads, Facebook, Instagram, is you have to select a special ad category. So, you know, as a special, uh, uh, you know, uh, a special ad category. So that would be, let's go here. Sorry, I got to go. We're not promoting this. We're not promoting employment, but we are promoting housing opportunities. So, we need to select that. We'll put next. We'll put no offer. And then we've declared the category. So the reason that uh, you have to declare a category is, you know, or rather once you've declared a category, this then limits the way that we are able to target people. So there's two ways through a special ad category that you could run ads. One is based on interest targeting. So that's going to be, um, you know, the behaviors, like they're following real estate agents. They are, you know, active on Zillow, truly a realtor.com. They're looking at credit information. You know, these sorts of interests are the intent. I mean, these interests from a lead perspective as someone who's actively looking at real estate, considering, you know, what's out there, they're following, um, you know, people in the real estate industry, influencers, in the real estate industry, people who are educating around that. So from an interest targeting standpoint, uh, you're able to run your ads and put them in front of, of that segment. Um, you know, so when you declare that special ad category, you know, you, you know, the ways that you set up your audience twofold, you know, it's, it's going to be interest-based. You could do the lookalike, 
And actually the third is what we call a broad based targeting. So you're essentially just casting a wide net. And if you're casting a wide net, what you really need to emphasize is within your creative and your captions, it needs to be clear what you're selling, which is, you know, home solutions. Let's go here. Oh yeah, no problem, Eric. I'm sending you my contact info right here. Uh, yeah, just shoot me over an email uh, and we can schedule a call. All right, so next thing I want you to consider when you're running Facebook ads, Instagram ads, what's your offer? You know, what are you looking to do? Is it, you know, VA home buyers? You know, are you, are you, are you taking advantage of your benefits? You know, zero PMI, 0%, I mean, no PMI, 0% down. You know, when you're creating an ad, you need to present an offer. First time home buyers, you know, stop paying someone else's more and you can start paying your own. Uh, you know, what's the pain point that people are trying to solve? So, you know, as a self-employed borrower, you're dealing with uh, issues qualifying and getting access to mortgage products. Uh, you know, DSCR, you're an investor, you're looking to buy and, and build wealth through real estate. You know, so whenever you're running ads on social, you really have to focus on what's the pain point and what's the solution that you offer and use pictures that speak to that audience. So a front of home picture, we have run, uh, you know, we've been running ads on Facebook for 11 years now, Facebook and Instagram for 11 years now. And it's interesting because historically, one of the best creatives that we have always seen perform well in a mortgage or a real estate ad is a front of the home picture. Uh, you know, so keep that in mind when you're designing your ads and you're looking at your ads, you know, front of home pictures perform well. Uh, you know, also, if you're offering a guidebook, what is that guidebook? What is the hook? Include that in the, you know, in the text of the images. Uh, you know, these sorts of, of features can really help improve your click-through rate and, and people who stop and take action on your ads. Uh, you know, something I will share with you, uh, we talked about an awareness ad. You know, how many of you guys, uh, you know, and just kind of, you know, looking at, at, at the room, how many of you guys have a, have an audience of real estate agents that, um, you know, that you're trying to do more business with? Maybe these are people you haven't done a deal with that you want to do a deal with. Just, you know, throw a, I do in the, the chat box. What you can do with this list is you can run you can run a lookalike audience, you know, and you know, Sloan, you're, are you, are you relatively, relatively new at EMC or how long have you been here for? I'm weeks. Okay. So it's a, this would be like a great time. You can use a lookalike audience to do an announcement, you know, how excited you are to be at EMC and, and, you know, the offers and what you're going to be doing to level up your business. You could run a lookalike audience to those realtor partners and your database of customers around the announcement. Like that would be an example of um, using an audience to push a specific message in front of to drive excitement and engagement. You know, and I'm talking about spending, you know, five dollars a day. Like doesn't have to be a massive ad spend, but just being able to put your information in front of more people is going to generate more conversations. Um, you know, so that's something that's possible through, uh, you know, through Facebook and, and, and Instagram ads. So one of the things I've been trying to uh, work on here is just exactly what you're saying, but the education piece, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I've got a lot of friends. Uh, I have one of my friends queued up who actually runs a secondary market for a bank. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole conversation would be as fast as we can get through what happens on the Fed meeting before, what happens at a bank after or during, you know, give people a reality of what's going on. But as I understand it, you can even segment those pieces like you get a AI uh, like uh, Riverside or something, Riverside FM, where you can tell it, like, give me five Instagram postings out of here. And yeah, just. Yeah, Chad GPT. Chat GPT can really be your friend. You know, what I would uh what I would tell you with you know AI, chat GPT is like artificial intelligence is incredibly powerful and incredibly eff an incredibly efficient tool, but it requires some human element. You know, you gotta take a look oh, yeah. out there and make sure you're putting some tone on, you know, on that. Where uh where are you based out of Sloan? I'm in Bend, Oregon. Okay. 
So, you know, if you're trying to go after, you know, in, in segments, say you're, you know, targeting Riverside, targeting Sacramento County, like various counties in, in California, uh, what you can also do is you could create friends lists on through your personal Facebook page and group mm-hmm. filters or people that you know that are in those audiences. And you can select that list for the posts specific to their market. So only that audience is going to see it. So it you know makes the message feel super personalized you know and and i played i played rugby for years so i have a whole rugby community that yeah there's things i post on the rugby community that probably wouldn't run on my you know other yeah i I think the big part too with all social media platforms is know your audience yeah right like who uses what if I'm going to do Facebook postings, it may actually be better that I segment Instagram and Facebook up because Facebook's an older generation. So I might do more like reverse mortgage stuff or, you know, what are you going to do in retirement or buying that second home or, you know, just geared more towards the audiences there. And then you mentioned TikTok, which is something I don't do yet, but I get it, you know, looking at Joe's stuff, is, you know, you can have an alternate personality or, you know, just have a lot of fun with that whole, that whole side of it. I can see some Saturday Night Live skits going on in my, my future. Yeah. You know, people love humor too. And and people also love when you don't take yourself too serious with this. Like, you know, the one thing I know on this call is that no one is, at least I assume, no one is an actor or an actress. You know, John Geary's isn't here. I know he's an actor, uh, but you know that uh, so just kenny just kenny gross that's all yeah you know so it's like when you're creating content you're putting yourself out there like that's you know that's going to create opportunity and and you know to your point segmenting it down speaking to you know a specific audience you know having a message that resonates with them you know facebook you're right large what we see historically a large growing demographic right now people 45 to 55 you know people who are you know, kind of in that sandwich zone where they have kids, but they also have parents, you know, there could be some move out, you know, opportunities, some, you know, cash out refi opportunities, first time home buyer opportunities. Uh, you know, so there's a, you know, plethora, but you got to stay organized and go there with a purpose or you can get lost. The other thing I would tell you, you know, as we're talking about it is, uh, you know, if you're inside of, uh, EMC CRM with the funnels, you can place your pixel for your Facebook ad, um, you know, inside of that, that funnel. And one thing that I, I recommend doing is set up the, uh, the pixel on pages, uh, related or the questions you have that are higher intense. Let me like give you an example of what I mean by that. Can I give like, one of my examples right now, and everybody could use this, but it's just piggybacking off of some of the stuff UWM spits out in their weekly. You know, 70% of all mortgage brokers out there, or MLOs out there are working for a bank, credit union, and or independent mortgage bank. And they're literally in their price sheets 400 to 500 basis points higher. So half a percent to a point in some cases higher in rate than most brokers. Yep. And that whole conversation should be the one that we're focused on right now because we know the reality is is probably 90 percent of all people that have access to rates are still trying to charge three two and a half two seven five or too much for the market share yeah you know Uh, it's volume hamburger time right i i think the more to your point too the more that you know it's like you're authentic you're honest you come from a need of helping and guidance you know people I think people see that and, and they respond better to that, you know, so it, it's going to generate more, oppor- more opportunities for you. Um, what I was going to say too, is with your pixel, the way that we have these, these funnels set up with forms is uh, you could have like, say, for example, you only want to target people that fill, you know, their credit score of good or better, or excellent or better. You could have the pixel placed on the, the page after in the funnel based on their answers. So it's kind of like a pixel magic trick in the sense of like, you're telling Facebook people that give us this answer are the people we're looking for. So using that pixel as a way to optimize your audience on social and and bring in higher intent, higher quality leads. That's something we've seen be affected there too. All right. So let's go through a couple other things. 
What else do we need to know about Facebook ads? All right. So, uh, here we talked about pixels, uh, custom audiences, you know, test. Te testing should be your friend. You know, test different headlines. What we've seen, especially if it's a purchase lead funnel, check your eligibility. Uh, you know, that plays well. We see positive you know, responses, you know, with, with uh, uh, lead forms using that, uh, you know, as a, as a hook in, in your ad. Check, check your eligibility. Uh, we also know that quizzes perform well. So like 60 second pre-approval quiz, you know, taking people to a, a funnel where they could fill out information. Like that's another example of something we've seen, uh, you know, perform well. Calculators, you know, uh, uh, taking people to a calculator page where they can, you know, calculate affordability. Uh, you know, that's another example of, of a destination where we know people, you know, the intent of that, that audience is, is positive and strong. Um, let's see here. So yeah, you know, just really what we want to focus on today is get some situational examples, how you can generate leads, how you should be formatting your database, you know, what's possible as it relates to Facebook and, and Instagram. Uh, before we go through some housekeeping items, any questions, anything that you guys are working on that you need help with as it relates to marketing, uh, you know, just give kind of an open, open floor format for a few moments. All right. So last thing I will cover with everyone today is I want to make sure that everyone on this call, you guys probably saw, you know, I've seen some emails coming out for me in regards to uh, signing up for the social media content calendar. So I want to make sure that everyone has access to that link. Give me a sec here. All right, guys, in the chat box, there is a link to our social media sign up form. Please, if you have not done so already, take advantage, sign up, uh, you know, to give you give you some examples. You know, we are averaging right around, uh, you know, uh, there's there's faceless reels or static graphics that are going out. But right now, with the volume of users we have on the social media platforms, we average about 15,000 impressions per uh, you know, per post, and that's collective with a group of loan officers. I'm trying to 10x that, and the only way we could 10x that is by getting 600 loan officers on the content calendar. So uh, that's why we're being aggressive with our outreach. But it's all from a need of uh, you know a place of trying to help you guys grow and generate more conversations and and more opportunities. So take advantage of that. On Tuesdays, we have our. Uh, go high level CRM training. Make sure you're on that. I've saw a couple messages today about people looking to get the dialer, the power dialer set up. Uh, if anyone's looking to take access or take advantage of a power dialer, the CRM automations, websites, you know, it's really think of that like our centralized marketing environment where we're just providing support, helping you guys grow and, and you know, really leveling things up. Uh, any questions before we wrap up for today? All right. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see everyone next week. Bye.